Welcome to NEKVT Rocks. My guest today is Mary Alice Brenner. Mm -hmm. Mary is an artist, watercolor artist mainly, with her work exhibited at MAC. And she's a community activist slash organizer, although she doesn't use that label, I'm using it. <laughs> Tell us about what you do. I paint. <laughs> uh, Just like that. <laughs> try to catch up with myself. I always seem to be too busy. Um, you community organizer. Let's you just are. say I'm good at volunteering, and I should learn to say no more often. But you'll I never don't. do that. Uh, That's why you're sitting here. Yeah, because <laughs> you couldn't say no to me. <laughs> why? <laughs> yes, I whine about being too busy, but what else would you do? Right. I mean, I love being busy. Right. You, one of the ways in which I see you, and why I'm calling you a community activist slash organizer, is that you teach art to people who are not normally considered as potential artists. Well, why not? I, I totally agree with you, but you're the one who's doing that. You're teaching, how often do you teach? Well, um, I have been teaching um, weekly at 99 yeah. Gallery for about four years, I believe, right. at least. And, and um, yeah, I. I always offer it for free. Everything at 99 mm -hmm. is free. Right. And I'm hoping to serve the community near 99. But anybody can walk in. I've met some wonderful uh -huh. people. When I've walked in there and you've been teaching your class, I have seen some amazing artwork. It's incredible. It, they surprise me. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, first of all, it's a mixed group. I mean, some people have had experience with watercolor mm -hmm. or with art. It's fun working with those who have painted in other media and trying to get used to what watercolor does because watercolor is not easy. Right. It really requires you to let go. So sometimes the session might be more like a, you know, sewing circle uh -huh. <laughs> or, or, or a gab fest and we have a lot of fun and laugh and there's food and coffee. So, you know, many times I just think of it as art therapy, but I'll work with anybody, no matter what level they come in at uh -huh. and, and what they would like to learn. And I never interfere with somebody's style. Everybody's style is very unique. Right. It's uh, just principles of art that we'll work on. And yeah, it's fun. We've seen a couple of shows there where your students have had their art on display. It's beautiful. Yeah. Creative, with colors, and I know you're not calling that activist or organizing, but it really is because you're giving people another way of expressing themselves, yeah. confidence building. That doesn't mm -hmm. happen in real life. It sure right. doesn't happen on the streets of Newport or anywhere else. Yes, and I, and I really believe that art is for, for everyone. And everyone has some glimmer of artistic <laughs> kind of expression, whichever way they go. and. Yeah. Uh, Giving yourself the opportunity to, uh, many people have said this to me, boy, time went so fast and I've, they just totally let go of everything else mm -hmm. going on in their lives and just relax and have a good time. Yeah. And I think that's partly important, but also art, art is for everyone. It really is. I, everyone should have the opportunity to take a class. Not everyone can afford it. Right. And if it's not a class, then it's a plein air paint out or just doodling go ahead <laughs> right <laughs> just let it go the yeah. most of us when we doodled a lot of us as kids doodled as a way of sort of absorbing all the information that was being thrown at us particularly in a school and we all got yelled at for doing it <laughs> even though it it's pretty clear now that it gives a physical outlet while your mind is being bombarded with exactly. information exactly uh, I remember getting yelled at for that. Didn't you? I also have met people who failed art class in school. So what? You know, and sometimes they're good, right? But different, and different yeah. is is to be honored, right? Yeah. But it's not in our society. Hmm. Different is something to be penalized here. Hmm. You know, we're supposed to be lockstep and well behaved and. Yeah, you know, artists we're kind of kooky that way. You right. know, we we do. Uh, walk a different path many times. What was the path you walked to get to where you are today? Oh, 
<laughs> uh, you know, I worked up until retirement in 2003, and that was when I finally was able to act, do what I wanted. I uh, had always painted here and there, but having the time was a different thing. And I started with Kay Maynard in North Troy, mm -hmm. who is a lovely artist, and her work is around town at the hospital, etc. cetera. Um, and that was just a good group to paint with and met other good artists. Mm -hmm. I had joined Mac early on, mostly because I wanted to support art. The same with WAG, which is now gone, but right. I wanted to support the artists because I admire art. But along the way, I took lots of classes, met other people that taught me little things here and there, and you're always learning. I just finished a wonderful workshop, a four-day workshop with Thomas Schaller, who mm -hmm. I admire greatly. He's from California. And yes, I'll take more workshops constantly it's it's you learn little things you mm -hmm. learn big things you need to practice I keep telling some people it's just mileage just keep doing it until yeah. something hits you can't talk about it you got to do it right so right what did you do when you had a quote day job oh everything you can imagine <laughs> Goodness. Oh, you were part of the gig economy. No, 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 no. I just serially uh, <laughs> found new things to do. <laughs> I taught right out of college for quite a while. Um, got my master's totally out of my field in economics and instead of Spanish, which is what I had taught. <laughs> uh, worked in public capacity, course, county level, and then finally fed. I, then I guess the 1980s happened and I lost my job because everything I was really good at uh, was erased in the federal budget. <laughs> um, then I took up oh, waiting tables, uh, typing, uh, anything I could to get by, real estate for about eight years and back into teaching finally. Who knew? You know, uh -huh. it's it just... <laughs> so did you teach up here? Yes. When I moved up here, I didn't... I had there was no place else to use my skills or experience. Right. And so I said, well, so I walked into an art gallery in Jeffersonville and they were talking about, oh dear, they lost their Spanish teacher at Lamoille High. And I go, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I backed into it. So um, it came with a completely different attitude when I was older. It was more about the kids than about me. Uh -huh. it, was, it was actually enjoyable. Yeah. And that was why you'd left teaching before, because it wasn't enjoyable. No, I really was very yeah. active, politically active, and I really wanted to know about economics. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten involved with a bunch of people in Maryland, this was. Mm -hmm. And one of the professors says, listen, I have a new program I'm starting on, econ on environment and economics through the Ag res Resource uh -huh. uh, Division in the college. And no, I did not milk cows. It's Ag Resource Economics that I studied. Right. <laughs> so... Uh, Good, interesting background, and that's what got me, you know, wor working in policy, which I still am a policy geek in many ways. Yeah. How do you apply that now, can you? Well, to some extent, I, I served on a couple of committees for the U.S. As a matter of fact, and um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm trying to still. What I'd always wanted to do was find that one little leverage point where things could change. And I think, you know, it's down to the more intimate neighborhood level. Right. It's not at national level. Right. Yeah, so. one of the reasons I've always refused to get involved directly as, as a council representative mm -hmm. or, or as a committee person mm -hmm. in that official way is because I don't believe that change comes from within, within those groups, the policy-making mm -hmm. groups. It comes from pressure outside. Yeah, isn't it interesting they yeah. want to, uh, to control demonstrations? Yes. Hello, isn't the whole point to exactly. disrupt <laughs> and make, make people attention? think? What a concept. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, no, I don't do uh, demonstrations anymore. Um, I keep looking for reading about what is happening to the economy that still fascinates me. Uh, it's currently reading... Um, what is the, the new one? Uh, surveillance capitalism. Oops. It was, it was uh, yeah. uh, reviewed on uh, NPR, so I went and got the book. You know, that's where my interest still lies. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that art might be subversive, I hope I 
uh, allow for a whole range of art. I'd like to see even more extreme stuff come up here in the Northeast oh. so that we can wouldn't open it, eyes. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a Banksy here? <laughs> a Banksy, a, a uh, tattoo artist, fabric art. A fabric art is just incredible, yeah. textiles. And uh, indigenous art from various groups. So, yeah. Is there anybody teaching fabric art up here? Uh, no, but I do know some fabulous people that do felting, knitting, yeah. designing quilts, quilts <laughs> with designs that are not from a pattern. Right. You know, uh, mixing of media, mm -hmm. fabric and paint and fabric Where are and they beads. hiding? <laughs> They're at home. You know, that's what the Northeast Kingdom does. We all just go huddle down for the winter and create. <laughs> <laughs> it's not winter yet. I know. I can't get out. I'm going to go plein air today after his yeah yeah if if you could plot a route for yourself to get the the change that clearly we need here where would you be going what would be your direction mm. how are we going to get the changes we need i keep where look, is that incision? i keep looking for the workaround yeah i keep wanting to find a way that we can have the kinds of services as a community we need without being bureaucratic, mm -hmm. without being controlled by capitalists. And uh, institutions. And institutions where we can share, okay? Yeah. And, and we can, uh, the, the idea of the gig economy to me is a wonderful idea. I hate to see them as employees. You know, I know everybody up here moonlights somehow. It, it's just, and it's a hardworking community. Yes. I'd like to give the hardworking people in this community the respect and honor their due for being honest, hardworking people. Right. And, and let them feel that authenticity. Mm -hmm. and share. It's not sharing so much, it's trading at the original level of trading. Uh -huh. I'll babysit for you if you can fix my windows, right. or if I can do this for right. you, or I'll share my vegetables if you will give me a. You know, a barter I mean. community. A barter community. And we've always done it. Right. But I'd like to see it expand into those areas that are onerous and painful for poor people. Right. Such as car repair is my big thing right now. <laughs> yeah. Car repair o is... Outrageous. Outrageous. You can't do it on your own anymore because it's all computerized. Right. And we just don't happen to have that computer or that tool. So we have to pay somebody else. Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know... Years ago, even I used to be able to f repair my little Volkswagen Bug, you know. Right. Right. So like I'm, I'm looking at that one, um, the child care issue. Um, it's not my issue anymore because I'm... Really? Past that. <laughs> past that, yes. And um, transportation. Transportation. Housing. Such Why do one. we not have co-housing? Why do we not have ha more housing for seniors? Why don't we have community structures for tiny houses around a big community? Yeah. Dining facility. You know, the workaround is what I keep thinking of. There are other right. ways of doing stuff instead of still trying to yeah. patch up the old systems that right. don't work for people. Right. I mean, there are certainly intentional communities in some areas. We don't appear, to, well, there probably are a couple out around Island Pond and there are some towards Montpelier, but there's nothing around here. Yeah, and then the need is so great, and then you, the population is aging, right. and we're the people Tell that are really <laughs> too tired to do it anymore, right. and I am currently struggling trying to find somebody to lift heavy things for me. Uh, <laughs> That's funny all I need. you should mention you that. Know, just pick this heavy old thing up yeah. and move it downstairs or whatever. Uh, right. Yeah. We don't have access to, quote, handy people, people with some muscles and mm -hmm. some willingness who would trade for either for mm -hmm. a fee mm -hmm. or for something else. Yeah. It's really hard to find that. Yeah. And that makes all the difference for those of us who want to, quote, age in place, to use the logo. Uh, yeah, no, I, I just can't even imagine doing anything else. And the house maybe will fall apart well, <laughs> around me, but that's <laughs> duh. That's what where happens. I am, <laughs> where you are, and where any of us are yeah. who are aging. Yeah, yeah. I actually gave away a load of plants this year, house plants, <gasps> because dragging them in and out was killing yeah. me. 
I forgot to bring you your daffodil bulbs this oh. year. I will bring them eventually. <laughs> no, drop them a knack. I'll pick them up there. I will. But, you know, that's the kind of trade. Why not? Yeah. Exactly. That's why I teach the art. It's, yes. it's something I can do. Right. So, you know. And an interesting thing is, no matter what you give for free or give away, it comes back double. It does. It does, in it's a different form, a different hopefully. Form. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were picking kale the other day and giving bags of it away. <laughs> we gave some to Diane at the 99. And all I could think of was, please, nobody give us any it's more kale. Which is why I don't grow zucchini, yes. I right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what are you planning on doing with your art classes for the future? And I know you've brought some samples with you here that probably we can show on camera in a minute. Well, I, you know, it's fun when you have to teach something, you learn much more yeah. than you actually teach, I think. Right. I, it, having the class every week mm -hmm. forces me to actually paint every week instead of just laying it on the kitchen table and never getting to it. And, yeah. and, you know, and it gets me out. And it forced me also to develop a curriculum of, of sorts or a yeah. list of topics to cover and practice. And as I say, it's important to actually do it, not talk about it. Right. So I don't talk very much. And I paint too, so that's yeah. fun. Yeah. When I've gone into the 99, it's interesting because instead of this, quote, formal gallery, because that's a really tiny place where people have easels and everything set up, you're all just sitting there with paper either on your laps or on this little coffee table, which is, is such a wonderful way of showing you really don't have to have all this fancy no. schmancy stuff. No. Yeah, I provide the paper because the yeah. paper is critical. If you don't use good paper, you'll be disappointed. It's right. cotton. It absorbs the watercolors mm -hmm. and that allows the luminosity, the, the see-throughness of yeah. watercolors. It's um, yeah, no, I'd rather pay for them to have the paper that's good, and I tell them they can get any old cheap paints for a while until they know what they're doing. Right. Start with three primaries. It doesn't matter. You can mix. And uh, When we were kids, we had loads of watercolors. I mean, that was yeah, what was so available then. Well, that's how I started, because it was cheaper than anything else, so yeah. I figured, oh, I can, I can take it with me on hikes. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Basically cheap. It but it isn't, you know, once you get into it. Uh, right. Well, the paper's sort of expensive, and I have to buy it online, which there's nothing around here where we can get really high cotton paper. You can mm -hmm. get one 40 weight, which is what I recommend, but it's uh, somehow it just doesn't have that absorbency that I really think So you think have to send away for it? Yeah, and I buy it in big sheets and cut it up, and yeah. it comes out not that expensive, actually. Yeah. So. And then I, I know that you talk a lot about matting stuff. And <laughs> it makes a difference. It's hey, that's amazing. my last rule. I have you know eight rules I adopted from someone else. And <laughs> the last rule is never show anyone your work unless it's properly matted, and maybe framed. Because you know people just don't see it right. unless it's highlighted somehow. Uh -huh. So that's why the standard is pretty high at MAC, too. Yeah. yeah. The standard at Mac is gorgeous. I, you know, I'm pleased with some of the new people we have coming in. Yeah. 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 For anyone who doesn't go into Mac regularly, add it into your list of places. Yeah, on to your go. way to the cafe. Right. I am surprised how many people to really try to avoid downtown Newport when it's totally impossible to get from there to there without going right through Newport. I know. And you know why avoid why it? Why avoid it? <laughs> <laughs> it's there. there. There may not be a lot of stores there, but what we There's have one, yeah. are really worth looking at. Mm -hmm. And okay, so most of us can't afford to buy a lot of art, but we can certainly afford to walk in and look at it. Right. I buy art before I buy food. I'm really bad. <laughs> but uh, we have cards. Many of the artists make cards of their work. Yes. Um, and I price my work basically to sell in this market. If I were yeah. in Burlington, it might be a different price. Uh, I, I like people to be able to just come in and say, oh, I like that. That's good. And that would you look know, great on my wall. Uh, well, if they buy it, that's fine. You know, it, it provides mm -hmm. supplies for me. 
It right. pays for the, for the paints, for the paper. Right. Are you going to teach anywhere else? I taught last summer at the uh, Greater Barton Arts. Yeah. And we had a small group because they're just starting up, and I really wanted to support that community mm -hmm. to get Barton Arts off the ground and, and become a really a great place for people to go. It has so many resources available. Um, i trying to think where else I've taught. Um, I don't know. Give me a platform and I'll <laughs> teach to anyone. Have you ever taught anything at MAC? Oh, I did the framing workshop, or not framing, matting workshop Matching. twice. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I, I thought, I like the space we have for a classroom. Yeah. Uh, they would require me to charge so that they would get some income as right, they sure. need the income. Right. Um, and then I have Keeps the asked. lights on. <laughs> well, yeah, they have a bigger rent to pay. Um, what else could I say? Oh, by the way, if anybody takes that class at 99 and wants to pay, don't pay me. Pay Diane to keep the center open so we can keep doing these things. That's there really There are other important. art classes there. There yeah. was drawing. Mm -hmm. We've had tile block printing for a couple times. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really important to be able to offer something free for those who, who need it, mm -hmm. who, who don't have mm -hmm. the ability to pay. But any of us who can pay should. Yeah. Uh, we should contribute, put in. You know, as I say, it always comes back. Absolutely. Somehow. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. What did you bring with you? Well, I do a little exercises, and they're not my original ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exercises so that people actually do something to understand the principles. Mm -hmm. So we always do a value study. I'm going to hold some of these up so that this the is camera just a, I don't know who, if I did really that or somebody cool else colors. did that. A value study is when you just use one color, mm -hmm. but you make it darker or lighter to make yeah. the form. And that works with what I'm wearing. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. This is Look at that. <laughs> this is another value study with black and white. And I also encourage people wow. to always do a black and white study. Be, as a, they call them a thumbnail. Uh -huh. So that you can... Um, visualize where your different values would go on the page and how they work with mm -hmm. each other. It's the difference between the light and the dark right. that makes the, the painting. These are just what I call thumbnails, and the assignment was to put the same picture in all the different ki primary colors, mm. just so that you could understand how the primaries work. work. And what I see as I look at this is that you have stuff on the other oh, side. Oh, I'm always so doodling. So clearly you don't waste anything. No, no, we always have. We, we Actually, that's <laughs> think, really cool. What surprised me when I did it was the bottom one. I've uh -huh. never tried purple and orange. I don't know if that's and I'm going not to work It's actually camera, not a primary. Cool. Uh, uh, it's, not, right. it's a secondary comp uh, compliment. But uh, compliments yeah. are important. And... And so is color. <laughs> well, co color could be a master's degree. I mean, right. there's so much to learn about color. The other thing I encourage people to do is to always make a swatch. Uh-huh. A swatch of every color you have in your palette. So that you can see it. Now, yeah, these yeah. are just the yellow and blues. Mm -hmm. But I happen to have a lot of yellows and about four blues. And see how the transparency works or doesn't work. Because mm -hmm. some colors are opaque and will cover. Right. And on the back of that, I do a, another exercise. That one I messed up terribly. Right. On the back, that's an exercise that I call the chickens, where you draw a whole series of outlined chickens. Yeah. You drop a color in, and then you drop another color in and watch them flow together. And that is such a wonderful technique in watercolor right. art. So uh, you, you have to experience it and go, oh, look at that. And it's, it's fun. As I say, it's supposed to be fun. Right, I mean, that sort of reminded me of marbling. When mm -hmm. you have water and you yeah. drop either a drop of an oil-based paint right. or nail polish and just drop oh, it, it and then drop polish. another one and it just spreads out. Yes, yeah, so the pouring technique is real popular among acrylic artists yeah. right now. Um, I'm a little iffy on that, although I have painted on Yupo, which is almost as much trouble as uh -huh. that because Yupo is... Uh, non-absorbent it's like wax paper -ish. right and the watercolor just does its thing floats away <laughs> yeah that's not much good for watercolors it's it's kind of fun uh, yeah. um, 
Uh, you know, you can paint on anything, you, really. Uh, you can paint with tea bags. I've seen a lady up in Canada who paints with graphite. She has charcoal graphite, very fine, uh -huh. and then takes a water br brush and makes a design in it. There's all How kinds do you of use tea bags? Tea bags, it's uh, <laughs> they're, they're staining. I mean, tea right. bags stain. I mean, I know tea is. Get them wet and see what you come up with. Oh, not adding a color to it, though. No, oh, it's cool. the color of the tea. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't tried it with green tea, though. I don't know what color that would look like. Well, it's very but pale green it's tea. It's very pale, <laughs> yeah. I and don't it's more yellow than but, green. You know, it's uh, fingers. People will laugh at me. I'll use my fingers on the painting sometimes just yeah. to get a technique. Um, but boy, studying with the masters and learning how they plan their paintings has been a big thing for me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm more of a jump in and let's do it, but I'm trying to learn how to plan ahead, <laughs> which is why those exercises are good for me sure. too. And I'm going to try to discipline myself to do a thumbnail beforehand and try a couple of different approaches before I get the big paper out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not a good planner. <laughs> well, clearly you are a good planner in some areas of your life and not in others. You also had a market garden. Oh, yes. Um, I just raised perennials only. Uh -huh. uh, no roses, no shrubs. I mean, you have to limit yourself. That was intellectually the, one of the most challenging things I ever did. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Gardening is an intellectual challenge. I had spreadsheets. I grew all my plants from seeds. Mm -hmm. Perennials are very hard to grow from seeds. Yes, you I know. Like <laughs> 50, 60 percent germination and long yeah. germinations and da, da da So I had a chart that had germination time, acid requirement, uh, fertilizer, da 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 da, da, da shade. Yeah. The, the one thing I never did get good at was design of a garden. I just put a plant in. Hey, let's see what this does. <laughs> And I'm very, you know, I still have most of the plants. Uh, I've tried to cut back the garden, but I mm -hmm. can't possibly keep up with them. But uh, it was fun. It was very intellectually quite challenging, as I say. Right. So, so clearly, you used your p planning skills in terms of growing the plants, mm -hmm. but just not in terms of the landscaping. Although you do have I'll some do that. landscaping. You know, I've I'm been getting the, there. Yeah, yeah, I've been the recipient of a bunch of your plants, which mm. is wonderful because my garden is a jungle. So, <laughs> you know, I, I like the English garden look. I don't like yeah. to have things in rows too much. Exactly. So, I, d I don't do manicured either. <laughs> yeah. But you have wonderful plants there, and I mean that that brings some of your other environmental pieces in too. Right. Right. What do we well, need? Well, it's all totally organic. Yeah. Right. And, and nicely, we have organic farmers in Westfield. So yes. Yes, nicely, and uh, yeah, I've, d I've been playing with herbs too. Uh huh. I have almost every herb that grows in this area. I gave up on the pennyroyal, though. I shouldn't keep that. It's not a good one. Yeah, well, that has some challenges. <laughs> well, there's, you know, uh, yeah, um, culinary herbs, some tea herbs. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of medicinal herbs. I don't use them except, uh, oh, salves, maybe. Yeah. Because uh, you have that's another whole field of expertise. Right. And I haven't got room in my brain for much more. <laughs> <laughs> or time in your calendar. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I was just uh, packaging up my medicinal, I mean my uh, uh, culinary herbs today and yesterday. As I sit in the evening, I can shred them and right. clean them up. And So you, you grow the herbs, you cut them, you dry them, you package them. Yeah. Do you sell them? I did for a while, but yeah. you know. I just make sure I have uh, herbal advice, everyone. You throw out your dried herbs every year and put fresh dried herbs in. Right. Use <laughs> the fresh herbs during the season when they are growing. Yes. Parsley will live under the snow quite well. Yes, it does. <laughs> but what parsley else? really only grows for a couple of years. Yes. It's so, a biannual. Yeah. yeah. Biannuals are a challenge. Yes. Yeah. They are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have uh, digitalis that just springs up anywhere. <laughs> Same with the poppy seeds. They just spring up. And isn't that fun? That's the yes. fun part about gardening. You yes. don't want to be too clean. Yeah, yeah g gardening is important. And it's certainly important in an environment such as we live in, where 
everything everything counts. And yes, growing what we can use. I is need it really the birds. Important? I need the bees. I right. have a, a honey maker up the road for me, and I see his little bumblebees come down and discover that they like jewelweed. Yes. So I'm not going to weed that. I'm right. just going to leave it. They love the jewelweed. And I the try birds. and keep it in one place yeah, as opposed well, to everywhere. You can. But, uh, as you know, I have quite a large area, yes, you do. and I leave the hedgerow uncleaned. Uh -huh. um, I have a swale that is totally left alone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wish I had more time uh, uh, or help <laughs> to do more with gardening because I do enjoy it. It's my way of getting outside. Yeah. And speaking of time, unfortunately, we're out of time. This goes really fast. Thank you for coming in. How can people find out where your classes are? Oh, dear. I have a email. It's about all, as most of my friends know, I do not answer the phone. <laughs> yeah, getting you here was a challenge. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's an annoyance. And I do not have a cell phone that works because I live in a hollow. Mm -hmm. um, but do uh, you want me to just give my email? If that's the way that people can I think you. that's the best way. R-W-M-A Brenner, which is spelled B-R-E-N-N-E-R, -E -N -N -E at pshift.com. Perfect. Thank you so much for coming in. It was worth it. It was fun. Ch hunting you down to get you here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, <laughs> You know, if I'm next to the phone, I'll answer it. But right. if I'm in the kitchen, I probably will not run to get there. Right. <laughs> I get that. Thank you for coming. This is fun.